Funny story time. Was I ever sent to the principal's office as a kid? Yes. It happened to me twice. And this was around 1970. I was probably in the second or third grade. And I call this the Great Green Pea Caper. <laughs> now, if that doesn't have you intrigued, I don't know what will. When I was in uh, elementary school, uh, like second or third grade, and around 1970, I think it was, you know, I didn't have any elementary school friends. I am neurodivergent, and nobody in 1970 knew what that was, including myself. I just knew I was different, but I hadn't learned how to deal with it, or mask, if you will, at that time. So I always kept to myself, never got into trouble in most of my school days, with the exception of this one day in around 1970, the day of the great green pea caper. It was a typical day where all the kids would break for lunch. I got one of those school lunches, which consisted of what was considered a well-balanced meal at the time, on a heavy-duty rectangular plastic tray, just like the ones you see in the Fallout games, <laughs> with an assorted assortment of various food items, each separated in their own compartment indentations in this tray. I don't remember what the main course was, but I do remember one of the sides, the infamous green peas. <laughs> so there I was sitting at one of those long folding cafeteria tables with various other kids trying to quietly eat my lunch. I didn't talk to the other kids being quite introverted. But the table was noisy nonetheless. It was filled with a cacophony of elementary kids having their conversations in the school cafeteria, not known for any acoustical suppression. So there was plenty of reverb to that cafeteria ambiance. And then it happened. I took my fork and attempted to stab some peas for consumption purposes. The thing about peas, though, is that they are round and have a tendency to avoid fork stabbing. With the kinetic energy produced by my fork stabbing, one of the peas escaped to the confines of the indentation on my plastic lunch tray and landed on the table. I couldn't eat my lunch now. I was sitting there staring at this green pea on the table. That pea was a monument, a symbol of my failure to probably eat my peas with a fork. It was so embarrassing. And it was there for everyone to see. I had to do something. Then I realized that there was a gap between two of the kids across the table from me. That was my chance. I had to quickly and quietly, you know, quickly and quietly, I flicked this pea onto the floor between those two kids. Thank goodness I was able to hide my pea-eating disability. What a relief. But it didn't go unnoticed. One of the kids sitting across from me that was to the right of that P receiving gap was one of those um, extremely outgoing kids. He saw his opportunity. He takes his fork and he pretends to accidentally knock a P off his tray. And he insincerely, insincerely says, whoops. 
for additional effect and chuckles. Then, instead of flicking the uh, pee off the table like I did, he proceeds to send it down the length of the table so that all the other kid, kids could see this pee flying by in front of them. Suddenly, the table turned into an experiment of nuclear fission. Another kid from the other end of the table shot a pee down the length of the table from, from the other direction. The next thing I knew, there was this chain reaction of peas flying back and forth down the table. I did not participate in this. Again, I was embarrassed. I just wanted to finish my lunch and wait for the end of lunch bell to ring. So there I was, eating my lunch with green high-velocity streaks zipping across in front of me, when all of a sudden, one of the lunch ladies came to the table and started yelling for the kids to stop. The peas suddenly stopped flying. I was still trying to finish my lunch. I still had my peas on my plate. For all the other kids, you know, they didn't have their peas anymore. I had my peas on my plate. I was still eating them. But the lunch lady had one question. Who started this? <laughs> oh, my God. It was like the scene from a horror movie. All the kids at the table, in what seemed to be in one synchronous motion, turned and pointed my direction. I was thrown under the school bus, so to speak, by my fellow classmates. Any defensive explanation I came up with was ignored. So I had to accept my fate as being the one who started it. And I was delivered to the principal's office to receive the finest corporal punishment the public school system had to offer at that time. <laughs> and I, I remember it like, like it was yesterday. The principal says, bend over, touch your ankles. And he brought out this, this wooden paddle with the holes drilled into it, I guess to, you know, add to the aerodynamics, and swatted me in the butt with it. <laughs> there you go.